Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, being with us here tonight uh, on site and to our virtual congregation. Thank you for being with us as well. Um, we are so excited that you're, uh, that you're able to, to be able to tune in with us. I was just looking at you there and wanted to speak to all of you uh, that are online there. And so just God bless you. And if you have a copy of God's Word with you, I would love to go ahead and invite you to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. And uh, once again, thank you so much for, uh, for being with us. Um, I, I kind of want to say in the beginning, um, continue to, uh, to remember uh, the West Brunswick High School family, um, the, uh, uh, the Magby family, and uh, Akeem Jones, his brother. Uh, please remember that family. Um, and also, uh, please uh, place in your prayers um, Israel. Uh, be praying for Israel, okay? And um, so, uh, I heard a pastor say today that what's going on in Israel right now is a dark, glorious time. And uh, that was from the words of uh, Pastor Jeff LeBorg. And uh, so uh, please be in prayer and as always pray for each other. If you would join me now and we'll just open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, once again we thank you for the privilege of being able to gather tonight uh, here in the sanctuary at Soldier Bay and also being able to, to gather online and, and be a part of the services this way. Lord, it's been an interesting week uh, with everything that is going on around us. Uh, everything that's uh, going on in our country and everything that's going on around this world. And God, we just want to ask you right now, Lord, just to, just to please intervene, God, and soften hearts. Father, we pray for salvation tonight for the lost. And uh, God, we pray for uh, Israel tonight, Lord, and those that are, uh, that are in harm's way, uh, the innocent, Lord, that are, that are injured and dying, Lord. And we just pray for for that country tonight and Lord we pray for the family of West Brunswick High School and uh, Lord dealing with the death of uh, of Johnny uh, and his brother dear Lord we just pray for that family and Lord just uh, your word tells us Lord that um, uh, you draw near to those that are broken hearted uh, you comfort those that grieve so Lord we pray for your presence just to manifest yourself Lord, in that family's home and on the campus of West Brunswick High School and all that's involved, uh, Lord. Heavenly Father, we continue to lift up our country uh, and uh, just pray for, uh, pray for revival, uh, Lord, in our homes, in our churches, and within ourselves. Right where we stand or maybe right where we sit tonight, Lord, we just ask for your favor and your blessings, Lord. Now, Father God, um, show up tonight, Lord, uh, during this time of Bible study. Lord, I ask for your presence in my life. Lord, tonight I want you to guide my words. Uh, I want you to guide my thinking that I present what uh, you have placed on my heart tonight uh, with clarity, uh, with understanding, but more importantly, Lord, your favor and your blessings uh, as I truly feel I have surrendered to your will uh, in what we're going to talk about tonight. So, Lord, these are the things we ask, and we ask them humbly, we ask them reverently, Lord, and we ask them in all of your love that you give us, and your grace and your mercy. Now, Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. And as all things are asked in Jesus' name, we also ask this prayer. And everybody on site and online said, Amen. <clears throat> Um, I pray that I don't um, that I don't hiccup, I don't stutter, and there's in my prayer that I share with you tonight uh, what God has placed on my heart um, about um, I, I, I want to be careful in everything that I say. Nothing, again, nothing's wrong, nothing's bad. Uh, I, I think it's good. I actually think it's great. Um, in what I have been praying through and asking for God's help in uh, in moving forward um, here at Soldier Bay 
uh, Baptist Church. I believe I mentioned the other night that uh, I, I've been convicted of getting the word, and I want to encourage you and invite you to. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I said it uh, to get the words uh, pre-COVID out of your vocabulary uh, when it relates to the church, when it relates to Soldier Bay Baptist Church. Okay. Um, now I, I don't want to. I don't want this to come across that I'm that I'm mad or I'm mean, but just when we talk about how things used to be and all, we just we just we are in the here and the now, and we're looking forward to the future. And the Bible calls us to be obedient in everything that we we do and say. Uh, one thing that COVID has uh, been a blessing in is is it has allowed. Uh, churches has even allowed us in some ways to hit a reset button on some things and what one area that has been uh, laid heavily on my part is the discipline of prayer uh, with us as a church and also just as important is the discipline of prayer um, in your personal life and uh, matter of fact, while I and I can't tell you how long I've been, uh, and you may be thinking, where's he going? All this, it's, it already doesn't make sense. Well, I pray it does at the end. Uh, I'm just kind of sharing my heart with you tonight. Uh, I have I have been in prayer for some time now, and, and I believe I even mentioned it the first night we were back. Uh, I'm gonna try to stay still, okay? If y'all see me wander, reprimand me, okay? Uh, but um. Uh, y'all remember the time of meeting uh, and, and prayer meetings uh, and coming together and, and, and praying uh, it was it was uh, I'm going to break my own rule here it was before Jason uh, here at Soldier Bay Baptist Church I've heard a lot of you talk about there was uh, which war was it that y'all gathered and prayed was it Desert Storm Desert Storm uh, the church came together and, and prayed I don't know if it was one night a week or every night for weeks. I, I don't know, uh, but um, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of share. I just want to kind of open up my heart and share with you uh, that we're going. To, I pray that we're going to be moving uh, into a season of prayer uh, as a church. Now let me let me share with you um, what I've been um, praying about. And maybe prayerfully tie this in a neat little package and hand it to you tonight. Uh, we're not going to arrive there tonight. I want us to walk through some scripture together uh, as a church and, and just encourage you. Uh, uh, John Piper said that prayer, I, I, I love this. He said prayer has become a room service intercom rather than a wartime walkie talkie. A wartime, excuse me, uh, a room service intercom. We just go to God and tell Him what we want, and uh, and and maybe maybe that's it. Maybe maybe that's all we do. Ronnie Floyd, which is currently the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, he says local churches are the backbone of any prayer movement. If there's been any movement through the evangelical churches, it's been because of the local churches praying. He says churches are called upon to be a house of prayer for all nations. Did you hear that? We've been called to be a house of prayer for, for all nations. And, and, just, and you know Acts 2. You, you probably maybe have Acts 2 memorized. Uh, but it's interesting, and, and, I, and I'm really trying not to preach tonight. Um, but isn't it interesting, think about this for a moment, that, that there's nowhere in Scripture that Jesus says my house will be a house of preaching. He said it's to be a house of prayer. Isn't it interesting that the Holy Spirit came down when that 120 were what? Pray. I mean, the launching of the church, the launching of the church occurred while a group of obedient Christians, believers, were praying. I'm not saying pre-COVID here, but I am saying 
because of the pandemic, if we're not careful, uh, it's very safe to say because of the pandemic over the last year and some months, you may have felt like, you may be feeling like there have there has been some disconnection between you and the church. There may even have been some disconnection between you and God. And one thing that I have been on my face before the Lord about is getting back into a season of prayer as a church, as individuals, to draw us not only closer together as a church, but to draw us closer together to God. When you look at Acts chapter 2, I want to read verses 1 through 4. If you're there, go ahead and look there with me. And this may not be a typical Bible study night, but, uh, but I want to share with you this. And then we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna build on this uh, once again, if you'll let me use the word for a season. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled. Now, for Bible study, if you mark in your Bible, underline the word there, filled. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Please know, and I'm not talking down to you by no stretch of the imagination, but please know, this isn't the first existence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, You have God present in Genesis 1-1. You have the Holy Spirit present. I know He was in 1-1, but you have the Holy Spirit present in Genesis 1-2. The Bible says that the Spirit, God's Spirit, went through out of around the earth. How did the Holy Spirit work in the Old Testament? Now, I want to say it like this, just for just for just for it to be easy. The Holy Spirit was very much present in the Old Testament and how individuals received the Holy Spirit was God personally selected them for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. But here we have the Holy Spirit coming within them. When you see the word filled there, that is, that is taking space inside of something. And the Holy Spirit has come at Pentecost down on the believers, believed to be 120 in the room, and they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. We know as a New Testament, as the New Testament church, that at the moment of our salvation, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to remember that for just a moment. One thing that's one thing that's always a challenge. I don't care if you're a pastor, a deacon, a teacher, a choir member, a choir leader, or a Christian trying to live during these times. Maybe you have found yourself. I was confessing just a few moments ago. Uh, maybe you have uh, found yourself, uh, it, it's been a, don't get mad at me, it's been a challenge being a Christian this week with everything that's going on. Uh, I, 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 made a, I just shared my heart on social media this morning about something, and, and this is what I was referring to. And sometimes we'll get focused on, this is the gist of it, just in case you don't have it, but in, it was right after I came out of my prayer time and devotion time this morning, uh, I, I have been being caught up with all the problems that were going on. And we shouldn't focus on our problems. We should focus on His presence in our life. Are y'all okay? I know it's Bible study, but y'all can help me. And one thing that's hard to... Um, I'll just Can I just say it like it is? One thing that's hard to navigate through is... If, and, and maybe this is not a great choice of words, but I'm not perfect... But uh, it's hard trying to navigate a church coming out of a pandemic. It's been hard trying to navigate during. But God is blessed and God has shown us favor and God is good. Okay? So it's not always easy to determine, and here's my point, 
it's not always easy to determine God's will for our life. But when we're obedient as a Christian, and when we're obedient as a church, guess what happens? God reveals His will for our life. He reveals His will for the church, the New Testament church. Matter of fact, John 7, 17, I know some of you are taking notes. John 7, 17, I want to read this in its entirety. Uh, Brian, I forgot to tell you about that one. John 7, 17, I want you to listen to this for a moment. And it talks about, it's Jesus talking about the Father revealing His will to us. John 7, 17, Jesus says, My doctrine is not mine but it's His who sent me. If anyone wills to do His will, capital H, there it is, if anyone wills to do His will, he shall know concerning doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true and no unrighteousness is in Him. So what ends up happening, basically, guess what? It's kind of like a double-edged sword. If, you're not, if we're not obeying Jesus, now listen to this statement for a moment. If we're not obeying Jesus, I don't think we're following Jesus. Is that okay to say? And if we're not following Him, we're not obeying Him. And so... The advantage is, and what I like about this verse when Jesus says, uh, he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true and no unrighteousness is in him. I, I wrote this down in my journal this morning, talking about something else, but I just want to share it with you. I wrote, the longer we follow, and while we're following, it is revealed to us that Jesus is the only way, he is the truth, and he is the life. It only comes as you, it, it goes back to sanctification. Or is this okay? Okay, it goes back to sanctification. The, the, the closer we, let me do it like this, the closer we get to God, God will reveal His will to us. The, more, the, the, the longer we walk with Him, the more we walk with Him, the closer we become with Him, to Him, with Him, Him to us. I knock on the door, you let me in, I'll go in with you and sit down and have a meal. Okay, that, now I'm preaching. Okay, but... We learn, the longer we walk with Him, the closer we walk with Him, that nothing in this world is going to satisfy us. Only Jesus is. So therefore, He's true, He's accurate, He's pure, He's God. And what I see in verse 1, in the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. They were obeying Jesus. They had been obeying Jesus. They were, they were, they were the followers. They were something, the disciples were there. His mother was there. And they were all in one accord. And then the Spirit, then God being true and pure, He does just what He says He's going to do. He sends the Spirit. And it comes down. Now the wind is is the, the wind is synonymous, it's associated with the spirit throughout the, the Bible. But notice the wind. Uh, notice the 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 um uh 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 um um uh J. Vernon McGee said it was volcanic. It erupted, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. One story I love about Charles Spurgeon was um, this, these, this, and I'm going to try to tell this to the best of my ability. It's literally coming from memory, and I hadn't even planned to share it. But somebody was asking him about the, 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 the strength of his sermons and how he was able to preach the way he was able to preach. And I hate I can't walk around. Can, you, can we get a camera that moves when I'm... Um, uh, and he says, come here. And in the church, under the pulpit, was a prayer room. And people in the church 
met and was praying while he was preaching right above him. And I got to think about that. You think that pulpit ever shook? But the Spirit was promised. I, I want to give you this real quick. You know it, but please, please, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to not preach. John 14, 15, 18. John 14, 15, 18. The Gospel of John. Once again, Jesus says, now, now watch this, we all know it, but, but I'm setting us up for something. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you, how long? Forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. Jesus says, I will come to you. And then he said in 25, 26, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I had said to you. And they're sitting here in this room. This volcanic wind is coming. Do you think they started thinking about some things that Jesus had said prior to this Holy Spirit coming down? You think they started remembering? It was the new covenant that Jeremiah talks about that I put in my sermon a while back. That new covenant of, 30, of Jeremiah 31, 32, 34. The Messiah will come. And not only is He coming, He's going to forgive sins. This is a new system. This is a new covenant. But what Jesus was doing, will y'all do me a favor? Will you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5? Deuteronomy chapter 5. It's in the Old Testament. I, I, I want to pause and just show you something here. Deuteronomy chapter 5. This is going to go. This is going to be rapid fire, okay? But Jesus says, "If you love me and keep my commandments, the Helper's coming, the Comforter's coming, the Holy Spirit's coming." And in Deuteronomy chapter five, it's actually called what Jesus says here. Here's a fifty cent word for you. What Jesus says here in John fourteen eighteen is the uh, Deuteronomic covenant, is what it's called. Because in Deuteronomy chapter five, look at verse ten. This is going to be rapid fire because then we're going to go to 6. Then we're going to look at 7 and 10 and 11. In Deuteronomy 5, the Bible says in verse 10, But those showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Look at 6, 5. Right there in Deuteronomy, we're just going to turn a page. Deuteronomy 6, 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Look at Deuteronomy 7, 9. Therefore, know that the Lord, your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenants, excuse me, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Deuteronomy 10. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. The Bible says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes, which I command you today for your good. Deuteronomy 11. Verse 13, Deuteronomy 11, verse 13. And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, 
to love the Lord your God and serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season. Somebody thank you for praying. <laughs> okay? Uh, I will give you the rain for your land in its season and the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain your new wine and your oil. 22, last one, verse 22. For if you carefully keep all these commandments which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to hold fast to Him. See, when we love Jesus, when we love God, our love, it will be manifested throughout our life in our obedience to God. In our obedience to the Lord. If you'll allow me, in our obedience to the church, in our obedience to the choir, in our obedience to teaching Sunday school, in our obedience to leading Bible study, in our obedience to standing under a tent in the rain checking temperatures, it manifests itself. It's been said that, and I've written this. This is this has been playing on my mind for a while now. You may say, "Well, Jason, ain't fair. We've been in a pandemic." Well, it is too fair. It says if you want to see how famous the church is, look at the attendance on Sunday morning. If you want to see how famous the preacher is, look at the attendance on Sunday night. But if you want to see how famous Jesus is, look at the attendance on prayer meeting night. Why are you here tonight? Why are you tuning in tonight? You know what I like to kind of, you know, you know what I feel confident in saying? You're here tonight because you love Jesus. And I'm not saying those that are not here don't love Jesus. That's not, you're going to miss, my, you're going to get mad if you think that's what I'm saying. Just hang on. I'm not saying if you're not here because we're in, this, we're in different circumstances this week, okay? I realize that. I, I was in prayer this morning about whether to, to cancel services tonight and just go virtual. So I understand. The question should never be... You know, sometimes... Some, some, please, please don't ever say, you listening, you hear, don't ever say, I got to go to church. The fact of the matter is, you get to go. You get to go. Truth be known, you should be saying, I want to go. Why? Because of your love for Jesus. Samuel said, in, uh, Samuel said to King Saul, he says, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? He says, Behold, to, to obey is better than sacrifice. It's not, about, it's not about your... Can, can I say something? God does not... Now, don't... Y'all calm down a little bit, okay? Don't jump ahead of me. God doesn't bless effort. God blesses obedience. See, our effort, our obedience is what drives our effort. Are you okay? That's what drives our... Think about somebody's... I've used to... The, the kids, when I work with the youth, a lot of them would say throughout time, if God didn't want Adam and Eve to sin, why did He put the tree in the garden? Well, the answer is very simple. He wanted their obedience. That's what God wanted. And see, see our, our obedience drives our effort... Our disobedient drives the exit. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. Their disobedience. And, 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 and some, some, sometimes we feel like if we sacrifice something, I've heard, I've heard people say it, and I've probably been guilty of, of saying it, well, I'm not going to go do something, so I'm going to go to church. I'm going to sacrifice. We seem to feel like maybe we feel better about it because we're sacrificing something. It's almost like we're doing God a favor that we went to church that day. Or that we went to church that night. No. Loving Jesus is not a sacrifice. 
Loving Jesus should be a joy. To keep the commandments, to love Jesus. And the more you fall, you, do you know what I do for her right there? <laughs> do you know what I did for that 16 year old? <laughs> the more you love, the more you'll do for him. Is that okay to say? Won't you do anything for your children? Won't you? some of you do anything for your spouse? Maybe not Jennifer, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. You laugh and you listen. Won't you do anything for those you love? Serving Jesus is not a sacrifice. It's a joy. Zach, am I doing okay? I, I, I wrote this down for tonight, not in my journal. I just wrote it down for tonight. And Mr. Sunday, I, I was sitting there thinking about because I've been working on tonight for about a month now. I'm not bragging. I'm just sharing that I, I've just really been trying to, to and we're almost finished. We're almost finished. And no, not, no I'm not going to go another 15 minutes. We're almost finished. It's not until that you're full of the Spirit of God that you realize you need more of it. You, you got you to gotta have it. That's only going to happen when you're full of the Spirit. Just like these, if you allow me, Christians. They weren't called Christians here, but they are Christians. No matter, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, And where I've arrived at, y'all, and, and, and I don't want some of you to say, with what I'm getting ready to say, I don't want you to say, well, well I, I disagree with you. I'm not saying that Soldier Bay has been disobedient. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying this at all. Because I don't feel we've been disobedient. I feel the reason God is blessing Soldier Bay so much is because we've been obedient. But listen to this. If we ever become disobedient, to Jehovah. It doesn't matter how many services we have. It doesn't matter how much money is in the bank, how much money is in the building fund. It don't matter how many instruments we have. It doesn't matter how many came. It does not matter at all. If we don't care about being close to God on earth, why do we even want to go to heaven? We don't walk with Him here. As a matter of fact, if you don't enjoy His presence here, heaven is not going to be heaven when you get there. You're going to be so disappointed. But one thing I want us to, to one thing I want us to one thing I want us to guard against is just being okay with people coming. Is just being okay that the lights are on. With just being okay that we're meeting or we're, we're and we're we're working on getting back to meeting more. Just being okay that the bills are paid each month. Just being okay that we, 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 we have a Bible. Just being okay that we have a choir. Just being okay that we, we have a piano player. We have an organist. Just being okay we've got dedicated Sunday school teachers. Just being okay because it is not, God does not want us to just be okay. God wants us reaching the lost and making disciples of Jesus Christ. It's not about just being okay with everything. I was in a conversation, and it wasn't a bad conversation. It wasn't a hateful conversation. We, me and another church member uh, was talking this week. And, 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 the, and the, the statement came up talking about a Sunday school class. They said, we've stopped meeting. And I said, just because we've stopped meeting doesn't mean you need to stop being a Sunday school class. 
And we're not arguing. We were just sharing and talking about the Lord. It was a couple Sunday school lessons ago. God just spoke to me during the Sunday school lesson. I was sitting there. I'm usually a little bit tardy because of some things going on, but man, I walked in right on time. And I, I knew it was in the Bible. But will you take your eyes and just cast them over to Acts 2.42? You know the verse. And they continued. Let, let, me, let me wait for you to get there. Well, I want you to get this. And then I'm going to close in prayer. Acts 2.42 And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You know what that is? That's the Gospel. Notice the things present here. They continue steadfastly in the Gospel. In the Apostles' Doctrine. And, say it with me, fellowship. How many of you have missed fellowship? Fellowship. In the break. How many of you miss breaking bread? <laughs> but watch this. Say it with me. We're going to do it slow. And in prayers. Heavenly Father, thank You for this time tonight and thank You for Your Word tonight, Lord. And Lord, You know how we talk sometimes. And I often tell You, if I can just be honest with You, God. We need You. We have to have You, Lord. And Lord, will You help us Continue to be an obedient church of the New Testament. God, help us to not settle for just being okay. Lord, help us and convict us of just going through the motions and showing up and sitting still and being nice and smiling. But Father, I pray right now, and I just encourage each and every one that's listening or will listen, that you'll join me right now in praying, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, convict me from where I've been weak and where I've been empty. And God, will you fill Soldier Bay Baptist Church with the Holy Spirit. And God, will you fill the churches of the individuals that are listening and will listen, Lord. Fill their church with the Holy Spirit. And Father God, once again, we pray for that revival. We pray for healing and restoration in our country, in our government, in our families, in our homes. God, go to those even now that are broken and that are hurting and that need You. And then use us, Lord, to deliver the Gospel, the ear, the heart, and the hand. Now Lord, we know that You equip us. May we be strengthened and encouraged by Your presence tonight and Your words tonight, not mine. So Father, we thank You for this time. We love You. And as always, Lord, thank You for loving us. And Lord, thank You for being patient with me. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And we all said, Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. God bless you.